when we started this project uh, 12 years ago, we, we came from a, a conclusion that uh, Northeast India and, and Myanmar has lost over 95% of uh, Western Ulog Kiban population. So what could we do to try to reinforce these populations? We found out that uh, creating a rescue center on the field with the local people uh, could be a very good solution to try to help the Western Ulog Giban population in India to get healthier. And we opened the center in 2009. So actually what, what we do here is that we rescue Giban that are from the illegal trade. Uh, Gibbons that are illegally kept by people, most of the time in, in, uh, in poor conditions. We had uh, done intensive uh, study as well as um, patrolling in Rehoboi district over the last one and a half year. So far, since 2017, we had, uh, till 2018, we had rescued five Gibbons. They are in grave threat, not just, not just from poaching but also illegal trade. Or we get information on state-to-state um, uh, -state, uh, selling of gibbons, either as uh, traditional medicines, mainly uh, traditional beliefs, um, and you know where they can cure cancer or anything. But usually, that's just a myth. There's no such thing that uh, the gibbons bones or or cellulitis uh, will cure anything. We. Basically, when the gibbons reach here, we first provide care to stabilize them, uh, stabilize malnutrition, dehydration, several types of diseases. And uh, so that will be done during the first part of the rehabilitation process, that is the quarantine part, that is a 90 days quarantine. And after they complete these 90 days of quarantine, we uh, will start the proper rehabilitation process. The nutrition part is a very important part of our rehabilitation process because we have to understand that gibbons in the wild spend uh, over 60% of their time in feeding. We have to give uh, several numbers of feeding. We, we, we are here trying to give right now four feedings, uh, three feedings of uh, fruits and one feeding of leaves. The ones that are a little bit older, we will try to make group in, in first hand. Then when they are completely adult, uh, we will try to make couple, a pair, because uh, gibbons are actually monogamous. They, they have only one partner of the opposite sex. Actually, the, the program is not only a rescue center, it is a global conservation program for the species. So we are trying to have uh, the best impact we can. And it is obvious that you can't try to preserve a species or you, can tr you can't try to, to do conservation work without deeply including the local people in your program. And for me, the best way how to include local people is to provide education. So uh, we started uh, to work with the school nine years ago and the idea was basically to provide a good and reliable education to uh, rural kids who could not afford or we could not uh, have the chance to go to the town and get a better education. Uh, we are right now trying, we have found a white female um, in an isolated patch of forest in, uh, in Ramal Kangre village. So what we want to try, it's, we have already tried with another male, try to introduce one male to her so that we can create one couple. This is one way how we can return them to the wild.
why Calcine was chosen is because he is a lone male. Uh, he is up to the mark uh, according to his behavior, the way how he, the way how he, he moves in the enclosure, the locomotion, the way how he's singing. Everything is up to the mark with the wild, compared to with the wild gibbon. So that is the, the most important thing for us because you can't go for reintroduction with an individual that is not, uh, not yet uh, fit to be released. So he is fit to be released. Uh, now we are, what we are trying to do is that we want to introduce him to a wild female. So as I said at the beginning about couples, whether she will accept him, whether he will accept her, that part is up to them. Uh, us, what we have to make sure is that it remains safe for both individuals and in case it works then we will let him go with her. If there is any signs of uh, difficulties then we will bring him back. So as largely as possible we, since it's a conservation program and human uh, environment and animals are interconnected we say. So what happens in the forest, like deforestation due to tree felling or uh, making of charcoal, that is, um, that is proposing a very negative effect on, on a large global context of, global, of conservation as it is. We are really trying our level best. Uh, however, mm, we also need the help of people. We need the help of um, our forest officers or, or, or forest rangers to give us such information and to collaborate. And as we collaborate with them, they also should collaborate with us. Another way will be to find an uh, uh, empty space for, for a family, as for the two families we have here, and release them somewhere there is no other gibbons, because gibbons are uh, territorial, so we can't have more gibbons where uh, white gibbons are already staying. But reintroduction is definitely uh, the, the main goal of, of the program, because it is a way how we can reinforce the number of white gibbons in, in the wine, and it's also a way how to respect the ethic of, of the Western Ola Gibbons that again are ape and need freedom. <laughs> 